Hi, third graders. Um, welcome to our reading lesson for this week. Um, I know the screen is kind of dark and I'm sorry about that. I'm recording this after bedtime at dark. So it's kind of cozy for me because I know I'm about to read a great book and got my lamps on and I'm on my cozy couch. Um, but I'm sorry if it's a little bit hard to see. So um, we're still practicing the skill of asking questions about expository nonfiction books today. And I was thinking about this a lot. I was thinking about how when you are learning at home, you really have to take a lot of responsibility for your own learning. Your teacher is not there, I'm not there, to make you do the work, right? You kind of have to get yourself onto your computers and um, or your laptops or your phones or whatever it is, and you have to get your supplies and you have to decide that you're gonna turn your brain on and do the thinking that needs to get done. And I think that's amazing. Like that's not something that most third graders learn how to do. So I think that you should feel really good about that. And I also think that wondering goes right along with this idea of taking responsibility for your own learning. When you have to push yourself to ask questions about things, you're really pushing your brain to do more than just take in the words and understand the words. You're taking it a step further and saying like, okay, I understand this. Now, what do I wonder about it? How can I push my brain even further to ask some questions? So I think that's pretty cool that we're doing this challenging um, work for our brains. Okay, so um, first of all, you're gonna need something to write with and something to write on for this lesson. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that and grab yourself a piece of paper and something to write with. And ready, set, go. Okay, so last week we read a book about the tropical rainforest. And today we're going to read, um, we're gonna leave the tropical rainforest to explore a very different animal habitat. So we're gonna be reading this book, Explore the Desert. What do you think you know about deserts? Just stop and think to yourself for a moment. So I don't know very much about deserts. I guess something I think I know is that they're very dry. Um, I don't know how many plants and animals live in the desert because there's not very much water there. So I don't know how they'll survive. I know that some deserts can be hot and some deserts can be cold. That's about it, that's about all I know. Maybe you knew those same things, maybe you knew some different things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up to the table of contents. And just read the chapter titles aloud to you to get your brains ready for what we're going to learn today. So chapter one is called A Dry Land. Chapter two, Desert Plants. Chapter three, desert animals. Chapter four, people in the desert. Chapter five, desert field guide. And chapter six, a scientist at work. So just looking at those titles and thinking about what you know about deserts, stop and think for a moment, what questions do you have about deserts? Okay, so I was thinking about this too, and I think the chapter titles really helped me come up with some questions like what plants do live in the desert and what animals live in the desert and how do animals and plants survive in the deserts with so little water? Maybe you have similar questions to me, maybe you have some different ones. We're gonna to try to keep those questions in our minds as we read this book. During the reading today, I'm going to stop five different times. And at each stop, I would like you to jot down a question that you have about the part that we read. So um, I'm gonna set up a page for myself that says stop and ask questions. Like this. And then I'm going to write five stops for myself. So that'll just help me make sure that I'm gonna do that work of stopping and asking questions in those parts. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four, five. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video if you need to and set up your paper so that it looks like that so you're all set to do this work. Okay, and let's start reading. All right, a dry land. I'll do my best to show the pages. I couldn't find a digital version of this book, so I have to just read the paper version. A camel slowly walks across the hot, dry sand. Sunshine blazes down on the camel's rider. Wind blows the sand around them into giant dunes. The rider sips water, but the camel will travel many miles before it needs to take a drink. Its body is made to live in a land where water is hard to find. Animals like the camel are suited to live in the harsh conditions of a desert. The world's deserts are the driest places on earth. Deserts get less than 10 inches, 25 centimeters of rain each year. Desert air is so dry, raindrops often evaporate before they reach the ground. This label says camels. And then this caption says, some people use camels to travel in hot, dry deserts. Camels can go a long time without water. So let's go ahead and stop here. What question can you ask right now? Go ahead and jot that question down. I'm gonna pause my recording for a moment so I can jot down a question as well. Just restart the video when you're ready. Okay, so welcome back. Um, I jotted down the question, how can a camel go so long without water? Like, what is it about its body that helps it go for so long without water? All right. You might have jotted something different down. That's totally fine too. The desert biome. Um, so there's a picture right here and the caption says, the Atacama Desert in South America is the driest place on earth. Rain might fall only once every 20 years. In the desert biome, a community of unique plants and animals have adapted to the dry climate. Desert plants and animals depend on each other for survival. Desert plants provide shelter and food for desert animals. Animals help plants by spreading their seeds throughout the desert but some deserts have such harsh conditions that almost no plants and animals live there. And then over here, there's a map. It says desert areas, and then the field note says, where are deserts? Africa, Antarctica, Arctic areas, Asia, Australia, North America, and South America. Deserts can be cold or hot. Antarctica is a cold desert. Temperatures stay far below freezing in winter. Thick fur or feathers protect animals from the cold. In hot deserts, animals hide under rocks or in holes during the day. Plants have adapted to hot deserts too. The leaves of some desert trees curl up during the hottest parts of the day. They save water this way. And this says burrowing owls. Okay, so let's stop again here, pause the video, and jot down a question that you have from what I just read. Okay, so I jotted down the question, what are some other ways that plants and animals have adapted? I'm curious to know, what are the other ways that plants and animals make do with the amount of water that there is? You might have jotted down a different question. Um, okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead now to page 14. And this chapter is called Desert Animals. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and read that caption right now because that picture grabbed my attention. The caption to that picture says, a desert tarantula has tiny hairs all over its body. Okay. Desert animals. Mice and tortoises are just a couple of the animals that have learned to survive in the desert. Desert bugs are fierce fighters. They have to be tough to live in the dry land. Scorpions jab their prey with poisonous stingers. The stink bug shoots enemies with a smelly spray. The desert tarantula has stinging hairs on its abdomen. 
If a bird or snake gets too close, the tarantula flicks hairs into the animal's eyes and blinds it. Other desert insects are gentler. Butterflies flit between flowers. They drink the blossom's nectar. Colorful butterflies stand out in the brown desert. Okay, so let's stop again here and pause the video and jot down a question that you have about this, about what I just read. What are you wondering from this part in the book? Okay, so this one was a little tough for me. I had to sit and think for a while, but the question that I came up with is, why does the tarantula have so many hairs? How does that help it survive? I know that the stinging hairs help protect it, but I'm wondering why it has hairs all over its body. Scaly, spiky, and bumpy reptiles thrive in the desert. They have watertight skin. Their skin doesn't sweat, so they don't lose water. Scritch, scritch. The claws of a lizard scrape against the sand. The nervous lizard scrambles toward a bush. A nearby snake slithers to a stop. The snake senses the lizard. With a snap of its powerful jaws, the snake grabs the lizard and swallows it whole. And then the caption for this page says, a sidewinding adder snake swallows a lizard in Africa's Namib desert. Whew. Okay, here's the next page. Another hunter crawls along the desert floor. A gila monster watches for a meal. The red and black lizard Sorry, no, no, there we go. The red and black lizard finds a kangaroo rat hiding beneath a bush. With quick gulps, the gila monster gobbles up its prey. And then the label for this picture says that it is a kangaroo rat. And the caption for this picture says, when a gila monster bites its prey, deadly venom from its jaws flows into the animal. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there, pause the video, and jot down a question for stop number four. Okay, so I did think about this one a little bit too, but what I found is that when I have to stop and think to come up with a question, I really have to make sure I understood what was read on the page. So that asking a question really does help me think about what I'm reading. Okay, so my question for stop number four was, why are there so many poisonous creatures in the desert? We've learned about all these different insects and animals that use poison to trap their prey or to protect themselves from predators. And I'm just, I'm wondering why there's so many poisonous creatures when there aren't in some other places. Okay, um, so we're gonna get to our last, our last stop here. Um, this next part, the next two pages that I'm going to read are about the desert animals that hunt at night. Desert animals hunt at night. During the hot day, many animals hide in cool burrows or under shady rocks. But when the sun goes down, desert animals come out. High above in the dark sky, a brown bat flies overhead. In the shadows, a lean coyote sniffs the air. It catches the scent of a mouse. And here's this picture up top. The caption says, coyotes hunt at night in the desert when it is cooler. And then for this picture down here, it's a picture of a scorpion. And the field note says, scorpions are night hunters. Size two to three inches, five to six, eight centimeters long. Color, yellow brown. Food, insects, spiders, other scorpions. Okay, well, good, and I want to learn about this owl on this page. From a small hole in a giant cigarro cactus, an elf owl's round eyes scan the ground below. A speckled grasshopper leaps from a bush. In a swift dive, the tiny owl snatches the grasshopper and silently flaps back to its nest. As the sun rises, night animals go back to their nests and burrows. During the night, few animals found water, but they aren't thirsty. To live in the dry land, desert animals need very little water. And the picture for this elf owl says, an elf owl peeks out from its nest in a cigarro cactus. 
Okay, so go ahead and pause the video again and write down your last question. What question does this part of the book make you think of? Okay, so my last question for today, for stop number five, was do other types of owls need more water? Because it said that, the book said that to live in the dry land, desert animals need very little water. So I guess this little elf owl doesn't need very much water. I wonder if other owls, like barred owls and snowy owls, if they need more water than that because they don't live in desert climates. So I'm probably not gonna find the answer to that question in the book, but um, in coming up with that question, I still had to think a lot about what was in this book about the elf owls and how they work. Okay, so we came up with five different questions. What I'd like you to do now is just take a moment to look over those questions and choose the one that kind of made you the most excited about what we were reading. Like, in other words, which, which of these questions do you wish that you could turn and talk to somebody about? Because it just really got you thinking and it got you curious. Okay, so hopefully you chose your one question that kind of really got you curious and got you excited about the book. I think for mine, it would be number four. Why are there so many poisonous creatures in the desert? Because it just, I like, makes me think about animals who live in different places and there aren't very many poisonous creatures in the Pacific Northwest where we live. So why is that? Is it because there are more places to hide? Is it because there's more food available or more water available so they don't need poison to uh, protect themselves or to catch their prey? I don't know, but it makes me really wonder. It makes me want to go do some research and talk to somebody else about what they think also. Okay, so hopefully your brain sparked a little bit. Hopefully you had a good time reading this story. Um, I didn't get to read all of it. If I have time later this week, I will read the parts that I skipped and post them in the reading folder for this week. You do not need to send me your list of questions, but if you want to, I would love to see it and you can send it in the optional submissions folder in the big yellow submissions folder for this week. Okay, that's it for the reading lesson today. When you are doing your IDR for the rest of this week, make sure that you're stopping and asking questions as you read. It could be a nonfiction book or it could be a fiction book, but it's a really important skill to just stop and ask yourself some questions about what you're reading as you read. And on Thursday, I'll teach you a lesson about how to write a reading journal entry about the questions that you're coming up with. Okay, thank you so much. See you later.